The most important reason for the rise of reality television is simply financial. The shows are relatively inexpensive to produce. I mean, if you think about an hour of prime time drama, huge crews, expensive sets, stars making hundreds of thousands of dollars, executive producers um, and creators making vastly more than that, writers making millions per season. As a rule, dramatic shows cost vastly more than reality shows, but the revenues are, um, can and often are, quite a bit more on reality shows. As an example, on last season's Thursday night version, Dancing with the Stars, um, a 30-second commercial on Dancing with the Stars got $229,000, while Friday Night Lights in the same time slot was able to charge half that. The hit show Grey's Anatomy charges $450,000 per commercial, while American Idol reaps $750,000 per commercial. And as the finale approaches, they get about a million per commercial. So if, of course there's an incentive to making these shows, and there's no shortage of people who want to participate. One of my students, a woman who has accomplished in numerous ways, I wish I had done as much as she had by my mid-20s. She was an investment banker, a lawyer, accomplished in the arts, and she asked me about going on The Apprentice, and what did I think? And um, I told her something my former boss, who was the um, creator of Law and Order, told me. And he said, television basically is about one thing, and one thing only. It provides a life support system for the commercials. And all television operates in fealty to this. So if she went on the show, they would basically walk up one side of her back and down the other if it would increase a ratings point by one one-hundredth of a percent. They would create a character for her to play, and she would be that archetype role, no matter who she truly was. And was that something she really wanted to do? And the truth is, nearly all reality shows aren't particularly real. The conceits, the casting, the shooting, the editing, the storytelling, they're not intended to serve as beacons of light and truth. They're intended to make the audience stick through to the next set of commercials. I mean, the standards of what's considered ethically acceptable in making most reality shows would make the Nixon White House blush. I mean, the, these shows frequently use what are called frankenbites. And a frankenbite are sound bites that are taken out of context, statements from the participants by stealing a word from here and two words from there, and then artificially constructing these sentences and putting them over neutral footage. These manufactured sentences are put, presented on screen as if the person on screen has said these words, when in fact, often they haven't said these words. And it, you know, sometimes you have situations where it'll be 180 degrees the opposite of what someone intended, but they've constructed these sentences. And um, they actually serve the story the producers want to say, but often have no relation at all to the scene as it happened. Television also on the reality side and drama side works on the idea of wish fulfillment. I mean, we all, we want, we all look at things and see, want things as, as we hope they would be. I mean, the White House isn't really run by a bunch of extraordinarily ethical and smart types, especially now. But we all, we all, hope, we all hope it is. You know, and true love isn't found in situations like you find in The Bachelor, but we all fantasize that it could be. And so it's the idea that, that the nobody who becomes a chart-stopping star on American Idol, the instant millionaire and survivor, you know, in a world where criminals are captured and justice is served all in 42 minutes and 43 um, seconds of Chris television, Broadcasting Company presents The Candid Microphone, the program that brings you the secretly recorded conversations and reactions of all kinds of people in all kinds of situations. When it's least expected, you're elected, you're the star today. Smile, you're on candid camera. With our hocus pocus, your focus, it's your lucky day. Unfortunately, you know, 
the man who recommended you uh, didn't tell me exactly what you were. You're not exactly my type. Well, what is the type supposed to do with you? You were coming here. I was going to interview you for a job. You don't fit the qualifications. Oh, well, that's I'm not sorry. the story I heard. Well, oh, what kind of job? Oh, it's a very, very tough job. In what way? Well, you'd be making a lot of money. No, we just need to... <laughs> I love it.